Kinematics is the description of motion. Kinema is as in cinema, it means motion. We describe motion using distance, meaning how far, then time, meaning how long. We measure distance in meter and time in seconds. But in everyday life, we use Kilometer most often, the K stands for thousand, and hour or minute for time. We combine the two, distance and time, and we get speed. That means how fast. Speed is measured by combining the units of distance and time, meter per second. But in everyday life, when we see cars or motorcycles, we usually measure their speed in kilometer per hour. Speed can be said to be change of distance with time or speed equals to distance by time. Another term used for describing motion is acceleration and more about it later. The first person to think about kinematics was Aristotle but unfortunately he got it wrong. He thought of a stone and said, things don't want to move. The person who finally got it right was Galileo. He did experiments instead of just thinking and he rolled a marble along a ramp and he came up with all the concepts of speed and acceleration. However, the person who put it all together was Sir Isaac Newton, who wrote perhaps the greatest book on science ever written. Although he was British, he wrote the book in Latin. The Principia has the structure of another famous book, Euclid's Elements, Euclid's book on geometry. It starts with definitions and then axioms, meaning established laws. And then the book starts, which has three sections and finally a general scolium, meaning final comments. The famous Newton's laws of motion is actually Galileo's laws and they are assumed to be established facts before the book even starts. Let's start with measuring distance. This is a path I have often taken. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go outside and take my phone with me. It has an app that can convert footsteps into distance. So let's go outside. This is a pedometer. It's an application that measures the footsteps. And here, direction doesn't matter. I'm just Whatever direction I go, it just measures the footsteps. And as you can see, I have uh, made around 2,764 steps. And it has taken, I'm quite slowly, walking quite slowly. And it has taken me around over, just over half an hour. And I have walked the total distance of 2 kilometer. Just slightly over than 2 kilometer. If you want to calculate the average uh, speed, it will be total distance by total time. But what you see right now, uh, the speed that they're writing, it's just at the moment, instantaneous speed. There is a concept called instantaneous speed, speed for a small uh, distance, and there is average speed. That means the overall speed. So if it took approximately uh, 30 minutes, meaning 0.5 hour to travel, and the distance is 2 kilometer, then uh, the average speed would be Total distance by total time, 2 km divided by 0.5, which is 4 km per hour. But instantaneous speed, as you saw in the parameter, keeps changing. The real world is in 3D, but the ground we walk on is in 2D. So the path that I took was much simpler than, say, the flight of a bird. However, it is still complicated. So what we do in math, we just think about one dimension. It's motion in a straight line. That means we have to redefine our concept of distance and speed and make it much simpler. Although a bit unrealistic, it helps us to understand things a bit better. The first term of motion in a straight line is displacement. Displacement is distance in one direction. But to be more accurate, the definition we're going to use is our position.
from a starting point. We are going to call it O. It doesn't matter what the starting point is. Let me explain using a number line. So this is a number line. Now our starting point is O and the symbol that we use for displacement is X. Sometimes the letter S is also used. So we are going to have two things to remember. First, the direction. If we move towards the right, we are going to call it positive displacement. If we move towards the left, we are going to call it negative displacement. The next thing is going to be the value. That means the value of the displacement itself, which we can call the distance. So first of all, suppose we are at a point A over here. So this is the point A over here. So if the question is, what is the displacement OA? First of all, it's towards the right, so it will have a positive value. So x equals to, it would have a positive value. Next, what is the position from O? So the position from O is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Suppose it's 5 meter, so it's 5. So it would be x equals to 5 meter or plus 5 meter. The next question is, what is the displacement for another point B? Now we are moving in the opposite direction. So first of all, the so displacement for A was positive. The displacement from B, from O to B, it would be negative because it's moving in the opposite direction. The value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Still the same. So 5 meter. So the displacement OB would be minus 5 meter. The distance in both the cases is 5 meter. Now, if you want to move from the point B to the point A, first of all, we are moving towards the right. So the displacement would have a positive value. Now, let's see how much distance we are covering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the distance would be 10 meter. However, remember the definition. It's our position from the starting point O. Although we start from B and we end at A, it is only 5 unit from O. That's why our displacement is going to be 5 meter. However, the distance BA, this is important to remember, the distance BA is 10 meter. Now, if you want to move from A to O, so from the point A to the point O, we will be moving a distance of 5 meter. However, if you think about the position from the starting point, our displacement would be zero. Of course, negative zero doesn't really matter. So whenever we reach the starting point, the displacement is going to be zero. The next term that we have to talk about is velocity. Velocity is speed in one direction. Our working definition would be Velocity is displacement over time. That means the velocity, just like displacement can be negative or positive, the value of velocity can be negative or positive, depending in which direction is it going. So if speed is constant, but the direction is changing, we can say that the velocity is changing. Suppose with the same speed, we move from the point A to the point B, it would have a negative value for the uh, velocity just because it is moving in the opposite direction. If it moves from B to A, it would have a positive value for the velocity. So speed would always have a positive value, but velocity can both be positive or negative. So the journey that I took, the displacement would be from the starting point, if you consider that to be the starting point, to here. That would be the simplistic one-dimensional motion. However, there were no road that connects this point to that. So in the real world, it would have to be in this path. That means this is a different displacement, this is a different displacement, this is a different displacement, this is a different displacement. So the one path is a much simpler model. The displacement time graph for constant velocity. Let's see visually what it looks like when a person travels with a constant velocity of 1 meter per second. Now, let's look what it would look like on the graph. 
on the vertical axis we have the displacement or position and the horizontal axis is the time the velocity is 1 meter per second and it is constant as you saw the motion was with constant velocity the displacement time graph look like this if it was at rest and not moving it would be a horizontal line meaning the position is not changing at all but time is changing this is the displacement time graph for the journey of two people the first person starts from town a and he travels for five seconds with constant velocity then for the next five seconds he does not travel at all he's at rest then he travels for the next five seconds and travels with constant velocity reaching the town B. The journey for the second person is starting from town B at the same time as person 1 starts from town A. The second person does not stop at all. He travels for a constant velocity for 15 seconds and reaches town A at the same time that person 1 reaches town B. If you're wondering what the velocity time graph would look like for the journey of person 1, well, the first 5 seconds, person 1 had a constant velocity. We don't know the value of that. Then, for the next 5 seconds, the velocity was 0, meaning at rest. Then, the final uh, 5 seconds, the person uh, 1 again moved with constant velocity. For person 2, entire journey was a constant velocity. So, for 15 seconds, it would have one horizontal line. There is an important rule to remember about displacement time graphs. The gradient of a displacement time graph is the velocity for that particular journey. So, if you want to find the velocity for the 5 seconds of the journey of person 1, all we have to do is find a gradient, which is found by change of y-axis divided by change of x-axis, and that would give us the gradient, the velocity. It is important to remember that force, that is, a push or a pull, does not cause motion. Energy causes motion. Force causes change in motion, also known as acceleration. Acceleration is the change of velocity over time. Let's go outside one more time and do a final experiment. This time, keep an eye on the needle of the speedometer. If the needle is rising, that means the object is accelerating. We call this positive acceleration. If the needle is falling, then the object is decelerating. We call this negative acceleration. Now I have the GPS speedometer of my phone in my hand and I'm going to walk faster and faster and faster as much as I can and see what happens then. I'm going to try to, I'm walking, trying to walk faster, faster and faster. I'm running a little bit. I'm running a little bit, almost at the end of my track, and I'm stopping. I now got on a motor rickshaw. It's starting right now, and it's accelerating. I'm now on a scenery-driven scooter. again accelerating now let's get a sense of what it looks like when an object accelerates now this is moving with constant acceleration of 1 meter per second squared as you can see it kept moving faster and faster and faster now let's see Visually, what does it look in the velocity time graph for constant acceleration? This is a velocity time graph where the vertical axis is velocity and the horizontal axis has time. The object is going to move at an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared. The velocity time graph for constant acceleration, when the acceleration is positive, starting from rest, the graph looks like this. On the other hand, if it is negative acceleration, also known as deceleration, starting from a velocity and coming to rest, the velocity time graph would look like this. We have already seen that 
the velocity time graph for zero acceleration meaning constant velocity this means the velocity is constant the motion is not changing that means the acceleration is zero now this is the journey for a vehicle that starts from rest then accelerates for five seconds reaching a velocity of 30 meter per second then maintains this velocity meaning it moves with constant velocity that is zero acceleration for the next 10 seconds and then finally decelerates meaning moves with negative acceleration to rest there is a very important rule regarding velocity time graphs the area under the graph represents the distance traveled that means if you want to know the distance traveled by this particular vehicle this area is area of a triangle half into base into height this area is the area of a rectangle length breadth and this one is half into base into height. If we add up the three areas, we'll get the total distance traveled by the object.